Well, in a piece for Leo Weekly, that's a paper in Louisville, Black Lives Matter organizer Chanel Helm offered some tips for defeating racism, and it reads like a mixture of Mao's Little Red Book and your third grade Christmas card list. Helm's list includes telling white people to give their homes away to black people and asking white women to get white men in their workplace fired. Jasmine Rand is an attorney and a Black Lives Matter supporter, and she joins us tonight. Jasmine, thanks all for coming on. Thanks for having me. So the, the core premise of Black Lives Matter, for whatever it's worth, I'm totally for. I don't think that police brutality is acceptable or brutality of any kind, actually. But it seems right. to me the one thing we don't need at this hypercharged, divided moment in American history is public figures encouraging more division, encouraging us to think of ourselves as members of a group first instead of Americans first. And this piece seems like a perfect example of that. Here's her Chanel Helm's second recommendation for making the country better. Quote, white people, if you're inheriting property you intend to sell upon acceptance, give it to a black or brown family. You're bound to make that money in some other white privileged way. That's just attacking people, right? I mean, how, how can you be for that? Well, first, I'd, I don't want my words taken out of context. So I don't agree with every bullet point of the list that she's drafted. However, Good. I do understand the underlying messages and principles. And I think that the underlying messages and principles are something important for our nation to understand. Um, Carlson, you and I both grew up with white privilege, which means we didn't have to think about race first while growing up. That's not true for many African Americans and for many Latino people. And I think that we need to acknowledge that important and distinct difference. And yeah. I think that's so let me, just, let, me stop, I, let me stop right there. You, you actually, I mean, what you're doing is making a generalization based on race, which is a textbook, the textbook definition of racism. You're assuming that a person's race is the most important thing about him. There are plenty of white people in this country who grew up with no privilege at all, and there are a lot of black people, including some in my neighborhood, who are very privileged and great people. And you know, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, a person's race is not always the most important thing about that person, but you seem to think it is. I completely agree, and once again, we're here and you're putting words in my mouth. That's not what I've said at all. In fact, what I wanted to say before I was cut off is that I think that the issue in our nation is more an intersection of race, of poverty, of national origin. There are multiple factors that are coexisting simultaneously that as a nation we can no longer pick apart and say, um, you know, make generalizations based on black and white because poverty is such a big issue in our nation and you're right I'm a first generation college student so I can completely you know appreciate what it's like to grow up um, you know slightly above a poverty line and how hard you have to work to put yourself through school but what she's saying is she's making an extremely important point that is undeniable that still in our nation today African Americans remain some of the most unprivileged groups. Native Americans are among the most unprivileged groups who do not have access to the education, to health care, to um, college, university, equal opportunities in the way that many white Americans do. And what she's calling upon white Americans to do general, is hold to on, call slow, out slow, slow down. Okay, hold on. She's just, she's, first of all, she's addressing this to white people, okay? Which by its nature is devices, divisive and I would argue racist, as if all white people have something in common that's meaningful. They don't at all. I mean, a recent arrival from New Zealand has nothing in common with my kids. You know what I mean? It's like it's, it's, the premise itself is false. And, and she's basically saying, give your house or your possessions to someone of a certain color. Again, she's assuming that the person's color is the most important thing. I don't, why would you want to be in the same world as someone like this? Why would you defend this? I don't understand. Well, you're, again, you're saying that I'm defending her bullet points, and I'm not at all. I think talking about her letter is not productive for our nation. What we need to talk about is the underlying principles of her letter and what it says. And what she's saying is that power never concedes itself, that white people do have a responsibility when you see racism, when you see racism in the workplace, it is our job to call it out as it is do, a black person's do, job to call it out. Okay, then, then why not just, uh, which I agree with, but then why not just say people? Why, why are you and why is she using people's race as a category. Why don't you say Americans, if you see someone say something ugly, you know you've got a responsibility to try to make it better. Why are you referring to people by their race? I don't understand. Because, again, you wouldn't understand because you've lived with white privilege your entire life. You don't understand what it is to be in the position of an African-American okay. woman right, who okay. has faced Now you're getting so Have dumb. Been... Look, I'm trying to take you seriously, but I can't. What you're telling me is that our education system is really bad. 
actually. Unfortunately, I guess I knew that. Jasmine, thanks for well, joining us. We'll be right back.